When you think of someone that's extremely intelligent, what images come to mind? Is it someone that has a really high GPA? Someone that learns things a lot faster than other people? Someone that's super creative and kind of eccentric? And would you consider yourself to be very intelligent? How do you even know how smart you are? For a long time, it was unanimously accepted by psychologists that the way to measure someone's IQ or intelligence quotient is through an IQ test, like the Stanford Bennett Intelligence Skills or the Weschler Intelligence Scales. These tests commonly measure things such as spatial ability, mathematical ability, and language ability, all three different types of intelligence. While these tests do and can measure aspects of someone's intelligence, psychologists today are actually realizing that these tests have major flaws to them. So if you've ever taken an IQ test online or something, and gotten results that you were not very happy about, then don't worry, because it may not have been a great way at actually establishing how intelligent you are and what different aspects of intelligence you have strengths in. These tests only measure three types of intelligence, while there are actually many more types, psychologists say about up to nine now. And they've been designed to work well for individuals in westernized culture, actually, while disadvantaging those in other cultures that value other types of intelligence because these tests don't measure those types. Because of these flaws in IQ testing, Harvard psychologist Howard Gardner came up with the concept of multiple intelligences, which is finally starting to change the way that people think about intelligence today. In the description below, I'll actually leave a link to the multiple intelligences test so that you can take it before watching the video or after and see where your strengths are, what types of intelligence that you score above average in, and which ones you might need a little bit more work on. All right, so the nine types of intelligence are, number one is called visual spatial. This type of intelligence has to do with having a sharp knowledge of where objects are in space and their distance and their measurement. People high in visual spatial intelligence tend to be really good at remembering images in their mind, they're visual learners. And they also have a really good sense of direction and people that score really high in this type of intelligence tend to navigate towards fields such as artists, being an artist or an architect and things like that. Alright, and number two is called linguistic verbal intelligence. People high in linguistic verbal intelligence tend to be naturally really good at understanding both spoken and written language, as well as generally being able to speak and write well themselves. So if English was your favorite subject in school, then odds are this is one of your top types of intelligence. These people tend to really enjoy reading and writing and often have a natural um, ability to learn foreign languages a lot better than other people. All right, number three is called interpersonal. Now this one is super interesting and it's actually really underrated and it has to do with social intelligence. Interestingly, psychologists have found that in terms of success in life and in your career, Emotional and social intelligence accounts for up to 80% of that, whereas just normal IQ, just like mathematical or one of those types, only accounts for up to 20% of it, so this is a really important, actually underrated type of intelligence. This type has to do with one's ability to interact and relate to others effectively, to empathize with them and understand people's moods. They have a sense of sharpened social acuity and being able to read other people, read when there's a mood shift in the room, stuff like that. And just generally being good at understanding and reading social cues. Number four is intrapersonal. I know they sound really similar, interpersonal, intra, but intrapersonal is one's intelligence within the self. This includes things like understanding your own feelings, being able to analyze why you're feeling a certain way. It's being introspective and understanding your own strengths and weaknesses, being able to self-reflect a lot. And people that score high in intrapersonal intelligence tend to be really good at solving their own personal problems, self-motivating themselves, and are often really good at achieving their own goals. All right, the next type of intelligence is called bodily kinesthetic. Have you ever met someone who's super clumsy, um, has no hand-eye coordination, really dislikes sports, is just not very good at them? Well, this would be a classic example of someone that scores really low in bodily kinesthetic intelligence. This type of intelligence includes having an awareness of one's own body. And these people are often hands-on learners. They like to tinker with things and try things with their hands first instead of just hearing about it or seeing an image in their mind. Typical careers of someone that scores high in this type of intelligence, of course, includes athletes, but also surgeons and craftspeople, people that work well being hands-on. All right, the sixth type of intelligence is called naturalist intelligence. Now this one's a little bit hard to define, but it was super important in our evolutionary history. And it was super important because certain people were better able at distinguishing changes in the environment and 
um, differences between subtle objects and things in nature that other people weren't. So this one was actually pretty important. It hits that person back in hunter-gatherer times that said, no Billy, don't eat that mushroom, it's poisonous, eat this one. I know they look identical, but there's a subtle difference between them. I'm sure that's not actually how it went, but <laughs> you get the point. Someone that scores really high in this type of intelligence is really good at noticing and sensing changes in the external environment around them and being able to distinguish between objects um, very effectively. So in the modern world, they're probably very good at distinguishing between cars, sneakers, food, a lot of them become chefs, um, things of that nature. Just being able to sense um, external changes around them, like the weather, things like that. All right, the next type of intelligence is musical intelligence. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, people who score really high in this one have an above average capacity to discern pitch, um, rhythm, tone, and just better at differentiating sounds. They're often really good at like sight reading and music. That's what it's called. You know, those people that can actually sing on pitch instead of being that person that thinks that they're a great singer but actually is like three octaves down and it's really awkward for everyone around them. It's, <laughs> it's the person that's like naturally has that ability to discern those differentiating sounds and they often are, um, navigate towards activities involving music like composing music, playing instruments, singing, and things of that nature. All right, the second to last type of intelligence is logical and mathematical intelligence. And this is the one that always comes to mind when you think of IQ testing and emo er, and intelligence in general. This type of intelligence has to do with the ability to calcul calculate mathematical equations, understand um, numerical concepts, and people naturally high in logical mathematical intelligence tend to enjoy seeing patterns, categories, and just naturally finding relationships between different things. All right, and the last type of intelligence, number, number nine, is existential intelligence. This type of intelligence has to do with having a appreciation and curiosity for you know like the bigger questions in life so like what is the meaning of life what's your purpose all of that kind of stuff they tend to have a very they tend to have a very like depth of character and um, really focus on like the bigger questions and like the meaning behind things and analyzing those. Yeah, these people tend to make great philosophers and tend to have a real depth in character. All right, and those are the nine types of intelligence. Hopefully now you have a better understanding that intelligence is way more complex and ambiguous than simply an IQ test. And that everyone has certain strengths of intelligence and areas that they you know, really um, naturally do well in and then areas that they don't do as well in. Now, the best way to succeed is by focusing on those top types of intelligence that you already naturally have and then learning how to navigate the ones that are at the bottom and that you don't have to focus on those as much. You can navigate them and adapt with them and then really focus on the types of intelligence that you already are naturally good at. And if any of you guys actually took the test, I'm really curious to what your top two types of intelligence are and what your bottom two are. So if you're, if you want to share those, that's cool. You can leave it in the comments. For me, I think my top two was interper interpersonal and bodily kinesthetic. And the bottom one was logical mathematical, which makes a ton of sense. <laughs> just looking back on my life. But just keep in mind that everyone has different natural gifts and not one type of intelligence is better than the other. See you next time.